So, a quick thought today. Something that I've been thinking about a lot lately. Something that happened with me when I got into photography quite accidentally, but it worked in my favor. So when I first got into photography, I didn't have a DSLR, of course. Like most people, I started with a point-and-shoot camera. Now, when I got into photography, digital had pretty much taken over. Film was not really very viable where I live. Uh, so started printing at home, editing photos for my wife, who was the photographer of the family, not me. Um, I was camcorder dad. You know, I had never really messed with the camera that much. So uh, she took most of the photos of the family. I edited them and printed them out on the computer because I was a computer nerd. That's what I did. When we made the shift to a DSLR, when I made the shift to a DSLR, I actually bought uh, lenses that were way better than the camera I had purchased. Of course, I would started with the Nikon D50. I still have this camera. It's a 6.1 megapixel camera. You can probably find them for less than $100 now. I still love that camera. It was great. It fit what I wanted to do at the time. And back then, 6.1 megapixels was pretty crazy especially when you considered we had just come from the Sony Mavica that was 1.3 and then the Sony Cybershot that was 3.1. This thing was 6 megapixels and you had a kit that came with the DSLR and a lens for 6.99. And back then that just wasn't a thing. So I, of course it started with Canon cuz that's what my mother shot and uh, helped her do some of the settings and stuff with her camera. Funny thing is, camera settings came kind of easy to me for some reason. Understanding the aperture and shutter speed in ISO. But I could take a technically proficient photograph that you'd never want to look at because it was artistically horrible. And showing artistically horrible photographs to my wife and her going through and finding the one out of a thousand that actually had some artistic merit to it completely by accident and then figuring out why she actually liked that image and why she considered that image good and the rest were trash and this was a great thing she was not afraid to tell me when my work was bad if you've got someone in your life that is not afraid to tell you when your work is bad that person is priceless keep them around at all cost listen to them now, if they can't tell you why it's bad, that, that may be an issue. But someone that's not afraid to give you constructive criticism is gold. This video has already gone way beyond what I was going to talk about. Lenses. Um, when I had the D50, I then decided I would upgrade to the D200 about two years later. The D200 is a very interesting camera body. Um, some people love it, some people hate it. I hated it because I thought I knew more than I did. And let me explain that. When I moved from the D50, which had a lot of automatic settings, to the D200, the D200 was more of a manual, um, I wouldn't say professional camera body, but it was the first sort of move into a camera that you actually had to know what you were doing to use it. And I found out very quickly I did not. So it wasn't the camera's fault as normal. It was user error. <laughs> so uh, I did bring my lenses with me. And this was what I figured out I had done. I had bought some really nice lenses at the time for the D50. And I was really happy with the work that I was getting out of it. And I just thought for some reason, oh, I need to upgrade. I think what well, the D200 was a 10 megapixel, something like that. You know, I thought I needed more. The megapixel race was a thing. It still is, I guess, but that's a whole nother video. Um, so, yeah, I learned very quickly that I didn't know what I thought I knew technically on the technical side. And I had to go back and read and study and really get into the weeds of understanding what I thought I knew. 
luckily the lens thing and the whole reason for this video if you think you need a new camera buy rent or borrow a lens first look at the glass you have in front of your camera you can have the greatest camera in the world and if the glass that everything is coming through to get to that sensor is not of good quality you're not just going to be very happy and think that it's the camera's fault and very uh, likely it's the lens. I'll give you a scenario. Uh, this happened to me probably, I think this was in 2011. I rented a Nikon to 24-70 to 2.8 lens. Um, one of my favorite lenses I ever shot with for weddings back in the day. Run and gun with a 2470 2.8. I love that lens. It was phenomenal. I rented it. I didn't tell my wife. I went out and did a shoot with it. Everything else was the same. Camera body, my editing style, everything. She called me on the phone. I posted some of the images and she said, what did you do? And I said, what do you mean? She said, what did you do? Your images don't look the same. Your contrast is better color saturations, but the things that she knows as an artist she was seeing and and knew immediately, and I said, well, um, I rented a lens, and the phone got very quiet, and I suddenly, I heard her go, okay, how much is it? <laughs> so... Yeah, lens. Wow, what a difference it can make. Uh, and that being said, at the same time, if you're a hobbyist, if you're doing this for fun, if you're doing this, man, you don't need these crazy $2,500, $2,600 lenses. It's just not. Now, if you're shooting wildlife, I'm sorry. If you're shooting wildlife, you're going to have to buy the big zoom lenses and all that stuff. You better have some money laying around. Those things are expensive. You've got to have the reach that those things uh, allow your camera. That's a whole other thing. I don't photograph wildlife. Uh, hats off to anybody that does that. I went out and to photograph birds one time, and wow, that's hard. You want to talk about a difficult hobby to get into. To me, birding was very difficult. Maybe I'm ADD or something. I don't know. But uh, photographing birds and wildlife expensive difficult and i imagine very rewarding when you get that shot i can't imagine what it's like to get some of the shots that i've seen some of the photo photographers around here get uh, we have luckily have bald eagles here and some of the photographs i've seen of these eagles are just absolutely phenomenal and the patience and know-how and money and time and everything that goes into that is amazing to me so anyway just thought i'd sit down tell you for a moment look at your lens instead of their camera body when you think you need an upgrade and and check that path out first and also when you think you need an upgrade what is it ask yourself what are you looking for that this camera is not providing you right now do you need more megapixels are you a landscape photographer do you need more resolution uh, are you a portrait photographer and you're maybe not happy with how uh, skin renders you know there's so many so many factors that go into considering what are you photographing are you a macro photographer doing like flowers and bugs and once again maybe you want more resolution so you want more uh, megapixel but then also you need to look at the macro lens that you're using uh, are you using a macro lens that allows you to get really close in and do focusing this is another uh hopefully workshop that we'll get to do is macro photography because that man that's a fun hobby suddenly your world becomes massive when you get into macro photography everything small is big and it's phenomenal anyway thank you guys so much like and subscribe if you enjoy to hear this guy rambling on about photography and everything else and i'll see you on the next one